Do you feel anxious or stressed out most of the time? Do you find it like easy to get triggered uh, into being scared or like easily startled? Do you find it hard to find a sense of calm or peace? If so, some of this anxiety may be partially related to dealing with a genetic alteration in your COMT gene. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to discuss the COMT gene and anxiety. We will discuss what the COMT gene does and how different levels of COMT gene or COMT enzyme activity can lead to things like anxiety, depression, fatigue, irritability, and other neuropsychiatric phenomenon or effects. So first things first, what is a COMT gene? Uh, so COMT is an acronym for catechol-O-methyltransferase. And basically its role, it plays a key role in breaking down catecholamines. But if you don't know what catecholamines are, you're probably thinking, what the heck, that doesn't help me much. So let me give you a little background. So catecholamines are molecules that have a very strong uh, psychological and so like mood and uh, neurological or nervous system function. So neuropsychiatric effects, very strong in stimulating and excitation or excitability. So these molecules are things like dopamine and adrenaline, uh, which really they're um, epinephrine and norepinephrine are the two molecules, uh, which kind of have a similar effect in the body, uh, which you can think of as adrenaline. Um, dopamine would be a separate function. So um, so they have an excitatory effect on our nervous system and our psyche. Um, and when they're in balance, uh, your body, in your body, catecholamines are great because they can help you with, you know, staying attentive, engaged, motivated, interested in things that you're trying to accomplish. They also give you a higher sense of uh, self-esteem and help you with decision making uh, or processing information, uh, making decisions. Specifically, that the latter uh, esteem and decision making is more of a dopamine effect. Um, however, you know, when you have too little or too much, it can lead to you know, problems like dysphoria or depression, anxiety, uh, sleep disturbance, other mental health issues, since the molecules that we're talking about are either overstimulating or understimulating. So, um, so when we talk about COMT gene uh, activity and anxiety, typically uh, we're referring to the overstimulated state and when these molecules are in excess. Not always, but typically that's uh, what we're talking about. So, so what are the genetics behind this? So the, from a genetic perspective, the COMT gene variant uh, that typically cause this, causes this is a, the MET-MET version or homozygous for uh, homozygous alteration in uh, the RSID uh, 4680. So the COMT gene codes for a protein, which is an enzyme that produces this catechol methyl transferase. And along that gene, uh, maybe, you know, like 20,000 base pairs long. I don't know exactly how long it is, but let's say it's 20,000 base pairs. Uh, along that gene, uh, there's uh, the RSID uh, that we refer to. Uh, you'll get an alteration. And when that's there, it alters the output of the protein or enzyme, COMT. And so what that does is it leads to a slowdown, a dramatic slowdown in the uh, catechol methyl transferase enzyme, leading to a buildup of adrenaline and dopamine and other catecholamines. Um, so whether you have one alteration or two alterations, both would lead to a slowdown. Um, and the typical or the um, uh, you know, when you have a normal COMT, then it's, you know, just running around, running along just fine. So typically, you know, how this plays out in, you know, or a, you know, symptom pattern that we would see is, you know, everything's going fine when you're not stressed out. You may not really even, you know, identify with the idea of being, you know, having stress or being an anxious person. But um, 
when the stressors start to build on one another is when uh, you start to notice it. So everything's fine. You're able to do your work and function great. Um, uh, once a stressor comes along, then the catecholamines are released. And as long as the stressor does not stick around, um, most people will do fine with that. But uh, if the stressor doesn't go away quickly, then those catecholamines are being triggered over and over again. And the buildup starts to become overwhelming for the body. And you're not able to uh, get ahead of that adrenaline uh, and dopamine. And so it just kind of keeps re-triggering because the more dopamine and catecholamines in your system, the more likely you're going to be, get triggered from the next event, even if it's you know something different that doesn't typically cause problems. Um, so it, in the feed forward way, it kind of creates uh, these problems where you're more stressed out. Um, leads to you know more of a tendency towards uh, anxiety and sleep disturbance. Sometimes it'll come out you know as irritability or anger. Some people don't identify with the idea that I'm stressed out too. So. You know, it's, uh, you know, important just to kind of look at, the, you know, how you respond to stressors. If you're the, <clears throat> the person that, you know, it's going to linger around in your system longer, it's hard to let go of, you may be dealing with this COMT gene alteration. So still, if you know you have this genetic alteration in the COMT gene, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to have anxiety either. There are alternative pathways to break down catecholamines. Uh, so, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have that. Um, however, if uh, those alter alternative pathways are also um, not working properly, then, you know, the tendency, you know, towards anxiety is going to be you know, a little bit higher, but there's a lot of different, you know, things that come together to create. It's not just one gene. You got to look at the bigger picture of, you know, how these things interplay with one another. Um, wouldn't be able to tell, you know, if someone told me they have COMT, um, Matt, Matt, I wouldn't know, you know, if they're anxious or not, they may be functioning very highly and, uh, feel great. So, so what can you do if you do have this? Uh, I recommend, you know, looking at cortisol levels because that can play a big role in, uh, in triggering the next kind of thing. So if you can get ahead of your cortisol and kind of uh, treat the adrenals and keep things in balance that way, uh, look at your workload and your sleep, you know, all those things work as a good buffering capacity for reducing your overall stress. Also, um, a lot of people are deficient in magnesium, and magnesium tends to be is one of the cofactors for this uh, enzyme. Uh, so that's a typical thing that I would uh, recommend um, in the case that you do have it. You should make sure you actually do have the alteration before you go uh, chasing something that's not there. But um, those are you know some things you can do if uh, you know if you think this may be a problem. Hey, as always, I hope this video was useful in helping you better understand the COMT gene and anxiety. If it was, please click on that like button because it helps me to decide which type of content you like most so I can produce more of that type of information. Um, there are many other topics surrounding genetics and the COMT gene and anxiety that I did not cover here. You may be interested in purchasing my book on genetics. It's called MTHFR Demystified, where I do d discuss um, COMT gene, MTHFR gene, MAO gene, and many other genetic uh, types of things. Uh, you can find it on Amazon, and I will put a link in the description. Um, but if these types of health topics are interesting to you and you like this kind of information, uh, please subscribe to the channel. I will be posting more videos soon, and we'll see you next time.